Chinese Swedish therapist here. Okay, so yesterday I did a video of Tensecrity, and um, today hopefully I'll get to my mom. But this is also important. So you learned about Tensecrity. Now today, if we can uh, share some ideas about biotensegrity, that'd be great because it is extremely important to why I am writing. And I think Swedish therapist says, uh, you deserve to know. So we'll make this as simple as we can because that's the easiest way to learn. And if you want to go through and have more resources, I've included links on this um, presentation. So that means that you can uh, go to those links and to your heart's content, you can find out more. All right, so eventually, maybe after my walk today, uh, we'll do um, the, one of the uh, videos about meet my mom. So let's share. Yo, let's share. Yo, 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 yo. Yo. Okay, I'm sharing. And it says I'm sharing. Good, 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 good. All right. So, in the You Deserve to Know about Tensegrity, just as um, I know I say um a lot, I realize that after I watch my videos, but I don't consciously know I'm putting that filler in there uh, before. I do my videos. I think I just did another one. So you deserve to know Tensegrity was quick and simple and nitty gritty. So right here, this is what I want to put in there. So mechanical should be explained better. Mechanical is a truc or a push and a pull, um, tension, compression. And like we said, it's not like a car engine. To understand mechanical, one needs to describe tensegrity, and that's what I attempted to do. And the cool thing is, you can find out more about Donald Ingbar, and you don't even have to rent the movie uh, documentary, Secret Life of Fascia. But to Bruce's credit, who made the documentary, it's worth every penny. Okay? Anyway, um, Donald Ingbar, in 1976, had an art class, and it was explaining architecture. And then he went to a science lab, and he saw the same architecture in his petri dish in his lab, and he started sharing the idea. And he was told, "Science is science, art is art, and they don't mix." So in, in a way, I think he was the beginning of awkward thinking. Well, there's been lots of awkward thinkers, but uh, thanks to Donald Ingbar, Ingbar, we have lots of cool things. Anyway, tensegrity structures are being used by NASA now, and I'm sure uh, SpaceX and Elon Musk know these inside and out and anyone else that's doing uh, work with robotics. So, to quote Vitas um, Sun Spiral, which is not his real name, but it's a cool name, Vitas Sun Spiral. So he says, tensegrity structures are tensile networks, which are shock absorbent and compliant. That's a lot like our body. Um, Vitas Sun Spiral also says, stiffness of your structure uh, ends up there's the uh again, I'm sorry. Stiffness of your structure ends up having a very direct impact on your efficiency, your effectiveness, how you respond to things. And so being able to tune that stiffness is, is, is really the key here. Is, is, it's about tuning stiffness and flexibility. So do you want something more floppy? Do you want something stiffer? And the human body does this in spades. Ha! Huh. So now you deserve to know about biotensegrity, which is a crazy name. And don't let the name fool you. It's really not that difficult, even though it's a big name and you're going to sound really cool and really smart, all you young people and common folk, if you say the word 
to your doctor or uh, neighbor, have you heard about biotensegrity? Yeah. All right. So again, let's, let's go through this idea of mechanical. Mechanical is, is um, so to understand mechanical, we have to understand tensegrity. And mechanical is this logom relationship. Now, in Swedish, the word logom is used for moderate. So if somebody is filling up my coffee cup and I say logom, that means that's exactly enough. I don't need any more. Don't ask me if I need uh, another, uh, a little bit more. It means that's it. And if, if I need another plate of spaghetti and somebody is putting it on my plate or here in Sweden, maybe short bular, which is uh, um, uh, meatballs and potatoes, short bular or potatoes most. So you can go to the Ikea store and get short uh, bular and potatoes most. And that is Swedish meatballs and mashed potatoes. And they're really good. Have them with lingonberries, even better. Okay. So if somebody serves that to me and they've put on um, four meatballs and, and a couple dollops of pot potatoes most, I can say logo. So it's, it's just right. It's Goldilocks. It's not too much. It's not too little. So Donald Ingbar and Ingbar, and sorry if I pronounce his name wrong. Sorry, Donald. He said in uh, the documentary Secret Life of Fascia that Bruce Sco uh, Schoenfeld Feld made, he said, tensegrity is in every scale of life. So when you think of scales, English language is really odd, really strange, because you can have scales of a fish, you can play the piano and play scales, you can, you, you can weigh something on scales, hence the picture over here, weighing. And so it's a measuring device, but then also a scale is a ratio. I am small compared to the Incredible Hulk. That's a great ratio because um, I, I feel nice and small. And, and it feels, but, but not so much nice and small that I feel puny and insignificant. I just feel smaller than the Incredible Hulk. So that's a scale ratio. Now, keep in mind with awkward thinking, you are, you are seamless. So when you feel non-seamless, you feel that you have an elbow, you feel that you have a wrist, Maybe you can't do a push up because your wrist hurts. That is being non seamless. So, overall, you're a whole, you're seamless because that's the way the body is designed. It's not designed to talk to you and say, I need help. Mm. So, this is important to talk about tensegrity because when we move tensegrity into biology, then we call it biotensegrity. And these mechanical forces that are happening inside of us every day, every second, every millisecond, every nanosecond, they have, they need this logom condition. Logom, yeah, Swedish word, oh, love it. All right, you deserve to know about biotensegrity because uh, we talk about um, biology moving into the human body, biotensegrity. And, and like I said before, I, I capitalized you. Sorry, Dr. Adrian, you're not gonna like that, but you as in plural, not you all, that's down South in the United States, but you as in a plural. Um, let's break down the word. Bio, bio means life. Biology, the study of bio, study of life. Tense, tense, so stiff maybe. Is that a good word? Tense. Tense is tense. And then the suffix, I-T-Y. So that comes from the French. And the French uh, suffix comes from Latin because it seems like all the European languages, uh, many of the European languages based off of Latin and French is one of them. So itas in Latin, 
but French is ite. So it means a quality of state or a degree. So bio tensegrity te is the state of biological stiffness. Isn't that simple? It's just like we're going to agree when we talk about biotensegrity, it's the logo push and pull. All right. Now, uh, we've all heard the word alkaline, and uh, we have a pH value in our body, and we can be logome, which is 3. Point, oh, sorry, 7.35 to 7.45. So when our pH is in that logome window, we live well. Now, if we're on one side or the other, too much or too little, we have a problem. And ab, uh, so alkalinity is, is uh, uh, alkalinity is, is what the blood vessels and the tissues are measuring. So if we have an alkalinity above 7.45, we're considered in uh, alkalosis. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. But alkalosis in a very, just right over the edge is, you know, we can be irritable, we can be weak, you know, not, not hangry, but irritable. We can, we can show weakness. Maybe it's, maybe it's harder to pick up my sippy cup. Um, maybe it's harder to open up the jar, but muscles can cramp too. So if you lay in bed and your muscles cramp and you didn't do anything, you know, check your pH or have some magnesium, eat a banana. Banana is full of potassium, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So if we have a loss of potassium, then we might be more alkaline and severe al uh, alkalosis is confusion, uh, 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 seizures, um, coma, and death. So keep drinking normal water, uh, keep drinking, keep eating lots of fruits and vegetables because they're full of all of those electrolytes and electrolytes, not, a, not is a big word, but it's minerals in a solution. So a bone is minerals. Oh, you know what? I have a bone. This is a bone of a cat. Well, I sure hope it's a bone of a cat. Um, if it's a bone of a, no, it can't be a bone of a child. <laughs> it has to be a bone of a cat. And, and those bones uh, form holes. So th this is blood vessels going up into the, the head. Yeah. So this is of my, my daughter's cat who we buried. And unfortunately something dug it up. So that is bone, that is mineral and it's mineralized to form bone. So when minerals are in a solution, vetska, which is wet stuff in Swedish, in my brain is uh, uh, vetska is uh, uh, minerals in a in a wet stuff. Okay, now biotensegrity. We've talked about that. Now look at this. This is a watermelon, and in my own head, I decided to see this picture and thought I could share this. So, out of that watermelon, it's round. And round isn't uh, is, is a lot of things uh, nature-wise, and if you have two pieces of that watermelon, you cut it in half, uh, you have an arch, and that's a one D. And if you move an arch into three D, you have a dome. Now, if you put a whole bunch of domes together, maybe you can get a shape. Uh, but biotensegrity talks an awful lot about icosahedrons, which is another big word. Think of an orange. Uh, I eat an orange every day because I take allergy medicine that dries me out. And uh, vitamin C is in an orange and that helps my collagen. So uh, this is a round sphere. 
And if you break it apart, it's already divided into wedges, small little domes. So think of biotinsegrity as it's just nature's perfectness. And ecosahedron, great another word. And it just means a bunch of equilateral triangles, uh, which would be 3D pyramids all together. So you can see that uh, die, dice, the, the red one, the red dice. That's an ecosahedron. Okay. Yeah, the, the, where is this biotinsegrity uh, 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 you deserve to know going? It's going because uh, I met Graham Scar and I met him through um, uh, uh, something that was put on by um, John Sharkey and Joanne Avison and Graham Scar and I even talked to him and I got his book and I did my best to read it. And this is the second edition and stu the structural basis of life. And this biotinsegrity book, Graham Scar is an osteopath. He lives in the United Kingdom and he wrote it in conjunction with Stephen Levin. And Stephen Levin is like the go-to guy if you wanna know about biotinsegrity. And Stephen Levin is a, a medical doctor and he's trying to change the, the establish the term biotinsegrity as being a branch of science. So if we have biotinsegrity as a branch of science, maybe everything I'm writing about my mom will make more sense. And all you young people, when you're going to school and sometimes you go to school and you know more than your teachers, <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, this is one of those things. You might be learning about biotinsegrity after your biology and after your chemistry class. Yes, I hope so. Okay, um, let's see, are we done? No, we're not done. Oh, because this is John Sharkey. He, he's a clinical anatomist and he's this uh, cool Irish dude. He, he uh, reminds me of my dad. He's just uh, really cool. He's not old enough to be my dad but um, he's just got a friendly face. And so um, he wrote the foreword to the book that Graham Scar wrote, um, Biotinsegrity, the, the Biotinsegrity, The Structural Basis of Life. So the book here, the question raised in this, oops, I don't know what that is. Oh, the question raised in this to me, should be a space there, are uh, courageous questions. And I am of the opinion that biotinsegrity is the most essential component of all the models that can be conceivably provide, can conceivably provide satisfactory answers. This eloquently written second edition, which is beautifully supported by full color illustrations. I don't have the second edition, I have the first. Um, provide step-by-step -step explanations, building logical and irrefutable evidence for the models of tinsegrity and biotinsegrity as the basis of life, form, and function. Pretty cool. Anyway, I think we're almost done. So John and his colleague, Joanne Avison, they've put on conferences for biotinsegrity throughout Europe and Canada. I think Canada, they had it in 2019, right before 2020's lockdown of COVID. And um, a really cool South African guy uh, Wilbur, Kel uh, Wilbur Kelsick was there speaking with him. And Wilbur Kelsick now lives in Canada and he works with Olympic athletes. Another cool dude. I don't have his picture, sorry. Wilbur Kelsick, W-I-L-B-U-R Kelsick, K-E-L-S-I-C-K. So if you see a Rastafarian with uh, dreadlocks, that's Wilbur Kelsey. All right. Now, this is Swedish therapist in her awkward thinking, but breathing adds a push and a pull. Hopefully, lago. If you hyperventilate, that's an excess. If you don't breathe, or maybe you breathe shallow through your mouth or you forget to breathe, that's hypo breathing. So tension and compression at 
every level of our being is allowed because we breathe. If you stop breathing, you stop being. So please keep breathing because I need all of you young people and all of you common folk to make some changes in science so that your, my mom, no, so your mom or somebody else's mom doesn't go through the same thing. I feel better. Probably because I was breathing. <laughs> Breath is a mechanical force. Fluids move because of breath. Hmm. I feel good now. Oh, did you see my little uh, picture here? <laughs> I, took, I took the watermelon and I made it a head and then I gave it a trunk and a body. And those two little um, 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 arches, they're arches and realistically they're domes because they're the top of our lungs. I'm not trying to do upside down breast tissue. That would be silly. So, so we have uh, the trunk, head, trunk, uh, and we have the tops of the lungs, which are domes. And then we have the diaphragm, which is another awesome dome. And then uh, we do have the pelvic diaphragm, which is another dome. And if you put them together, you have a sphere. Um, and then you have the legs that come from the pelvis. And then you have another joint, which is called the knee. And I couldn't fit on uh, after the, the lower legs and the calves, I couldn't fit on the feet. And I didn't put on arms either. So you fill it in as you need it. I'm done for today. I'm gonna go on a walk. Enjoy your day. Tak se hems mikja for kom heat to Swedish therapists. You deserve to know biotech lecture. Be safe. Hello.